Hello, and thank you for joining us this Sunday morning at Evangelist Crusaders Morning Worship Service. We're so happy that you decided to stop a while and worship the Lord right along with us. We want to let you know that we still are on location at 4307 4th Avenue South here in Minneapolis. And we invite you to come on out and understand that we are still adhering to strict protocol for COVID-19. And you can feel safe as you worship the Lord right along with us. If you prefer to still watch this on the three venues that we have available, you are more than welcome to join us. Pull us up on our website at www.evangelistcrusaders.com. You can also find us on Facebook and YouTube at Evangelist Crusaders Church. Now, we are so thankful for those of you who have been supporting us with your prayers and your financial giving all these many months, and we want to continue to ask you to do that if you certainly desire to do so. We invite you to go to our website and click on the Givelify link, or you can just download the app to your phone. You'll find us under Evangelist Crusaders. Our address there is 4307 4th Avenue South. We've also been encouraged by the cards and letters that you have sent. It is a blessing to know that we are being a blessing to you. So if you prefer the written word, address all of your correspondence to Evangelist Crusaders Church, Post Office Box 7291, Minneapolis, Minnesota. The zip code is 55407. And now we're going to go directly into the word of God. I know that you're going to be blessed. Listen and enjoy. You know what, um, I was, years ago we would say, well, the message has been preached. <laughs> Let's just pray and go home. But you know what, the Lord always has a little footnote to add on. Amen? He has a footnote to add on because there's somebody that may have just got here. Or there's somebody that may have been in the restroom when something was being said. And he wants to make sure that every single person has what they need. That there'll be nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing broken in the house of God. So when the word of God comes forth, listen intently. And put it in your heart. Write it on some paper. And we always like to say, if you can't use it now, just hide it and write some notes on it. And you'll be able to maybe pull that note out and use it later. The word of God does not return unto him void. It will accomplish that that it has been set forth to do. Amen. So this word today is for you and it's for our amen. Praise the Lord. It's Mother's Day. Amen. It's Mother's Day. Amen? amen. I'm a mother. We've already seen the mothers stand to their feet. Praise the Lord. There's a lot of mothers here. And if you're like me, when I first got saved, you know, we were uh, always trying to strive and be that Proverbs 31 woman. Can I just see the hands? Anybody else try to strive to be that Proverbs 31 mo woman? Oh, yeah. Anybody reach it yet? Let me see your hands. Let me put mine in my pocket. Amen. As I have not reached that yet until we know and understand that that was, just a, that was just a benchmark. That was just something for us to think about, things for us to do, but not for us to just stress out and say, if I'm not that Proverbs 31 woman, I must not be a woman of God. Amen. That's not what the Lord is saying. But the Lord himself has left us example after example. This is a Mother's Day message because everybody in here, if you're not a mother, you had a mother. Amen. Some had good mothers. Some had not so good mothers. Some may have been adopted. Some may have had absentee mothers. Some may have had some good mamas. Amen. But everybody was born and everybody has a natural biological mother. But the Lord comes along and he gives us all of these examples within his word to show us as mothers. In case anybody is in here, a young mother, and you're wondering, what do I do? How do I do? I feel so frustrated. I don't feel like I'm a good mom. My kids aren't doing right. I'm not able to accomplish this even in a day that I want to accomplish. I want you to take heart today and know that if you are doing your best, that is all that God wants you to do. Amen. Just try your best on a daily basis. Pray and ask God to help you to be that mother, and he will fill in the gaps. But throughout the word of God, we have example after example of a good mother. And do you know where it starts out? With the father himself. Did you know that in the word of God, the father gives us an example of how to be a good mother? In the word of God. He showed you how to be a good father, too, but today is Mother's Day. 
So he tells us and shows us by precept and an example, the word of God says we are supposed to lead, how to be a good mother. Amen? So we're going to be in 1 Kings, the third chapter. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the NIV, this story. But we know this portion of scripture very well. But I've never heard it as the Lord gave me a point to give to you today. Not, I'm not saying it hasn't been. I just never heard it. And when the Lord was ministering unto me as to what to tell you today and me, the word of God is for all of us. These are the various points that he dropped into my spirit. But we're going to be in verse 16. And I want to give you this story, and it's about two women that were harlots. All the adults know what a harlot is, amen? Now, I want you to get that judgment out of your mind, amen? Get that judgment out of your mind. I saw it snap right in there. No, listen, with a free and clear mind. So, 1 Kings, the third chapter, starting at the 16th verse. Now, two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One of them said, my Lord, this woman and I live in the same house. I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There was no one in the house but the two of us. During the night, this woman's son died because she laid on him. She rolled over on him, in other words. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while I, your servant, was asleep. Now she's talking to King Solomon, I want you to know. She's presenting her case before the king. She put him by her breast and put her dead son by my breast. The next morning I got up to nurse my son and he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't the son I had born. The other woman said, no, the living one is my son. The dead one is yours. But the first one insisted, no, the dead one is yours. The living one is mine. And so they argued before King Solomon. The king said, this one says, my son is alive and your son is dead. Well, that one says, no, your son is dead and mine is alive. Then the king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword for the king. He then gave an order, cut the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. The woman whose son was alive was filled with compassion for her son. And she said to the king, please, my lord, give her the living baby. Don't kill him. But the other said, neither I nor you shall have him. Cut him in two. Then the king gave his ruling. Give the living baby to the first woman. Do not kill him. She is his mother. Amen. 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 You can say amen for the word of God. Now, when we read this scripture, we always point to the wisdom of Solomon, which is far above any other the Bible tells us. It says that there's no none wise like Solomon. We always point to his wisdom, how he got to the bottom and it got to the truth. Amen? But sometimes we leave out the mama whose child was still alive and the sacrifice that she was willing to make because she's a good mama. She was willing to give up her baby. She knew that she knew that she knew that that's my baby. Mothers, you know your baby. We could have a whole nursery full of babies crying. I guarantee you if they all start crying at once, they ain't got to say mama or nothing. You're going to know your baby's crying. You're going to go down there and you're going to grab your baby. You know your baby's crying. The father says that they know my voice. Those that are his children know my voice. And another they shall not follow. Amen? So this mama, Solomon is wise, we know that. This mama said, no, 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 give, give the baby to her because she didn't want her baby to be killed. Knowing that she's sacrificing, 
She's going to have to give up that baby. That baby's going to go home with the other one. She's not going to see her baby no more. That's it. The king is ruled. If, she, if he says, all right, go on, because this one is said, then she, she said, no, Lord, no king, give it to her, then that's going to be it. That's it. Give the, the baby to the other one. But the mama wouldn't let it happen. She's a good, good mama. I started to ask Sister Shirley to sing, good, good father this morning. Because we serve the only true and living God. There is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved except for the name of Jesus. So God himself is giving us an example of the love of a mama. The sacrifice of a mama. And showing us what we need to do and how we need to think and what we will do. Now there's a lot of mamas in here. There's a lot of mothers, moms, medias, or whatever they call you in God's house today. But I want to ask you this. You don't have to raise your hand. Have any of you been hitting hard times? Even if you had one child. I had six. You might have six, seven, eight. I have some good friends that had eight. I know some that only have one. But when hard times hit, hard times hit. So as a mama, you ever cook the food for your children? Set the table as lovely as you know how? You know how to make that food stretch. I was told that when them babies are little, make sure they like potatoes and make sure they like rice. Because they drink a little milk that's going to swell up in their body. <laughs> so they'll be full. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do, amen? You got to do what you got to do. So a mama's going to take whatever she needs to do. I, I have a testimony. Sister Marshila Moore's mom gave me this personally. She said that she remembers having one potato. This is a mother's love. One potato, but she was a great woman of faith. She said she peeled that baby up. You know we make some other fried potatoes, right? With onions? Okay. Well, she said that's what she did. That was all she had. And she sliced that potato up. She sliced it up. I don't, I don't remember her saying onions, but then she put it in a pan and she put a lid on it. She prayed over it. When she took that lid off, hand to God, the pan was full. Right. Amen. Because she needed to feed her babies. A mama's going to do whatever a mama needs to do to feed their babies. You had a lot of kids, maybe not a lot of money. And then this was during the times when they were giving out powder milk, canned peanut butter, and government cheese. But that was the best cheese for macaroni and cheese. That was the best cheese for grilled cheese, amen? But you had to go there, and you had to stand in line, and you had to get rid of any pride, kick it to the curb, and say, my babies are hungry, and I do not have enough to feed them and to stretch this and make sure they have a good meal. I'll be there in that line, and I'm going to try to be among the first ones so I can get that big five-pound block of cheese and all that other stuff, amen? Because a mama will do what a mama needs to do. So will Father God. You ever set the table for your children? You make it pretty. See, I believe in presentation. I believe for your own, for your husband, for your children. No company has to come. I believe in a placemat. Whatever you make, cut you up some fabric or whatever. You got your plate there. You got your napkin folded all nice in a little triangle. Got your fork and your spoon and your, and your knife. Even if you don't need a knife for dinner that day, I set the whole thing because I want it to be presentable. And I want it to be appealing to the eye so that when it comes and the, and the food comes, it's like, okay, this is going to be good. A mother will do what she has to do. You know what? If you present, and this is what I have done with company from the saints of God, I washed home, set the table. All we had was hot dogs and pork and beans. Do you know, and some of them were the pastor's daughters. They'll confirm for you if you ask them to this day. Oh, this is so good. Whoa, this is so good. But it was just the presentation. A mother will do what she needs to do. Amen. You ever had some company come over at the last minute and you need to stretch that little one pound of ground beef into a big meatloaf It's going to feed 10 now because you've invited people to come to your house? The Lord will stretch that. He'll give you a way. Maybe you're going to put some more bread in there. Maybe put some more eggs in there, onions, vegetables. It's going to be a veggie meat, meatloaf. Amen. But you're going to do what you have to do. Amen. You ever set the table for your children and there was not enough? Pork chop night. You know, mothers, you have a rotation. It's pork chop, rice and gravies and green beans night. One pork chop per child, none left. 
And so you're just kind of hovering, you know, back and forth. Anybody need anything else? Let me get, let me serve. No, stay seated. Let me serve you. Let me serve you. need some more Kool-Aid? Okay. Kool-Aid, whatever. But mama's not eating and nobody's noticing. Because the babies are being taken care of well. And then this is one thing I would say. The, those babies wouldn't clean that bone all the way with the pork chops. Give me that bone. You're, you're wasting food. And just, you know, you probably little plate of bones so you can later on, you can be, you know, sucking on the bones. But a mother will do whatever a mother needs to do. It's not up to the babies to worry about where is my food coming from? Where is my water coming from? Are the lights on? Is it warm in the winter? Is it cool in the summer? That's not for the babies to worry about. It's for a good mama to worry about. The Lord Father God says, I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He said, you don't have to have need of anything. Just let me know what you need. And he says, we are, he already knows what we're going to ask before we ask him. But he says, you also, you have not because you ask not. I heard somebody said like this to me, a closed mouth don't get fed. You got to make it known. A, a good mother will put on whatever she need to put on. The baby's sick at school. She got the call from the nurse. If she's working, she'll leave that job. Boss says, you can't leave. Too bad. I'm going to get my baby. Baby's sick. Going to get my baby. Tend to the baby. Do whatever you need to do. Make up the hours. A good mama will take care of those babies. If the, if the lights do happen to go out because of storm or whatever, or maybe once in a lifetime because you couldn't pay the bill, oh, we're going to light some candles. We're going to make it just seem like, oh, you know, we're just having it nice and cozy tonight. You know? Don't worry, tomorrow it'll be all right. It'll be all right because a good mama takes that pressure off of the kids. That is what the Lord does for you and I. He takes the pressure off of us. He says, come unto me, you who are laboring and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, give me that heavy yoke. Here, now take mine. Mine is light and easy to bear. You take mine. Let's make that great big spiritual exchange. He's a good, good father. He teaches us how to be good, good mamas. Amen? A good mama will try to get to every sporting event they can. If they have to walk there, get a ride there, whatever they do, if they can. I know sometimes it's not always possible, but if they can. If there's conferences at school, a good mama will make sure she's there. Never mind I'm at home watching the nightly news or my show or whatever. No, I know there's conferences. I'm going to make sure they see my face at school so that these children will be well represented and that they won't do anything to slight my children because they know I'll be right back up here. A good mama sees about her little birdies in her nest. Amen? My father used to tell us, because I've come from a family of six, and I had six, and he used to lift up his hands. He'd say, you see my fingers? You see my fingers? And we were just all sitting around him. You know how your parents tell these stories forever and ever, and you never get tired of listening to them. See my fingers? He would say, these are my little pollitos. Little pollitos means little chickadees in Spanish. These are my little chicks. He said, these are not more important than these. These are not going to get fed more than these. All of these are just as important as this one over here because you're all mine. The Father tells us in the Word of God, all souls are mine, saith the Lord. All souls are mine, saith the Lord. And the way a good mama would take care of her, her uh, babies and her, and her little ones. I've got six foot seven babies now. But do you know they still can come to my house and if they want to just stretch across my bed and talk and vent or whatever, it's there. If they want to just sit at the kitchen table and we'll have a light meal together or whatever, we'll talk because a good mama is not going to judge anybody in her baby's, you know, in her, you shouldn't judge at all, but in your baby's surroundings. Let me reword, reword that. You're not going to judge your children. Now, you may not like every decision your children make. Let me ask you this. Don't raise your hand. Just think it here. Hmm, do like this, but on the inside. If Father God were to show you your life for the past 15 years, would you hide your head? Would you, or would you be on your knees in tears saying, God, thank you for forgiving me? Thank you for forgiving me because he sees it all. He sees the good, the bad, and the oh so ugly, and he goes past all that and sees the need, the need for more Jesus, the need for more of him, and he meets that need. Now, he knows that we're going to make mistakes. He knows all of that just like we know our children are going to make mistakes. But a good mama will correct, 
without making that child feel like the lowest crumb on the face of the earth, they'll correct, they'll instruct, and then a lot of people don't agree with this, and then embrace them and hug them. And if they're crying, just say, it's going to be all right, baby. It's going to be all right. Here's what you got to do. If anybody in here has ever got a whooping from the Lord, raise your hand. A guy in a whooping, you know you're supposed to do something the Lord told you to do, and you did not do it, and you got a whooping afterwards. Now, somebody listening online is going to say, God whooped you? No, well, you know what I mean. He convicted your spirit, man. He convicted you because you felt so bad because you knew that you knew that you knew God told me to go here and talk to that person or God told me to pray with my youngest son or God and you just shined it on and you let the time pass and then you forgot that's disobedience but God does he'll correct you but he don't kick you to the curb and make you feel like the scum of the earth or like a worm or the gum on the bottom of a shoe he'll correct you he'll bring it to your attention he'll show you the way to correct it and then he'll say now come on come on here you go it's going to be all right and he'll pat you and he'll say now keep on going even Donnie McClurkin sings a song, what do you do when you've done all you can? You stand, right? He says, what is a, a, a difference between a sinner and a righteous man? The righteous man gets up. Well, if he gets up, that means he had to fall in order for him to get up. God shows us how to be a good mama. Go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. I'll continue up here so I can read the NIV. Matthew 7, verse 11. I won't be before you very long, but bear with me. I, I kind of got up here a little later. It says, if you, here we go. Watch me, saints of God. If you, if you, then, though you are evil, well, am I evil, Sister Maria? Well, the Bible says there's none good, no, not one except for Jesus Christ himself, amen? So without the shed blood of Christ that we just had communion covering us and we took it in remembrance, without that shed blood, yeah, we evil. Without us repenting of our sins and saying, God, forgive me of my sins, yeah, we evil. But he said, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Anybody ever see some friends or some relatives or co-workers or whatever, and they're singing all the woes and the blues about their children, and they're so bad, and they're so disobedient, and they're this, and then they can't wait to tell you how many Christmas gifts they got under the Christmas tree, and every child got 20 gifts, and this, and they've been buying all year long, but, but, you know, you know how to give good gifts, right? So he said, if you, then... Though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to them who ask him? Anybody want a good gift? Raise your hand in the house of God. Who wants a good gift? God sees your hands. Yes. Ask the Father. Ask the Father. So if the Father knows how to give good gifts... And he said, even though we are evil, and we know what that means, aside from the shed blood of Christ, and he knows how to give us good gifts, how much a good mama? How much more a good mama? You know why? Because I've seen uh, meme after meme, I've seen word after word. Pastor talked a little bit about it with Helen Steiner Rice this morning. We were talking about a mother's love. A mother's love is fashioned directly after the love of God. The father saw that there was a need that sin had to be forgiven and there had to be a blood sacrifice because people could not follow the laws of Moses. Amen? And they were going to the temple and taking those offerings, you know, bulls and rams and sometimes just turtle doves or whatever to try to get their sins covered up, let alone washed away. But he said that it has to be washed away. So he sent his only son. Remember the two harlots before King Solomon? He sent his only son. He knew what we were like before Jesus. He knew what we stood in need of. And he sent his only son to stand in my stead, to stand in your stead before the judgment seat of God. He is the one who gives us the example on how to be a good, good mama. Whether you're 20, you might be 16, you might be 50, and you still got babies under your care. You can learn how to be a good mama if you just inquire of the Lord and follow what he says. Now, let's go to our final portion of scripture. Now, as mothers, I don't know if you have ever been here, but I have. I have six kids, and much of their upbringing, I was a, a single mom. I was divorced. 
not ashamed of it, not proud of it, just facts. And so I was bringing up six little kids by myself. And there were many nights that I would put them all to bed because we had routine. Homework, dinner, and that's a lot on a mom, right? Because you feel like sitting down, especially if you're working 40 hours a week. Dinner, homework, baths every night. None of this bath once a month stuff, no. Bath every night, get the clothes laid out for school the next day. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, get everything set in order. Kids are in the bed, and then by about 9, 9.30, until they got to be teenagers, you're feeling like, oh, I can breathe now. I, maybe I can sit down now, or I could, you know, I used to like to turn on the radio, KNOF, and KNOF would just kind of be my friend at night. I just love their, they're no longer in existence, but I love that. But I tell you, when I would just decompress, debrief with the Lord, and then myself get ready to lay down. Do you know that even after all that, after working an eight to nine hour shift, after going and commuting, battling traffic from one end of the Twin Cities to the other end of the Twin Cities, coming home and, and seeing to the needs of the children, whether they be at the school or at home or in sports or whatever, getting the dinner, get everything ready. After all that, after all that, I would lay my head down on my pillow sometimes and cry. And I would say, Lord, I feel, I feel like I am not a good mother. I feel like I'm not being a good mother. I couldn't point to one thing, but maybe you know you have those feelings of inadequacy. Or, this is a big one, come on women, sisters, young and old, you compare yourself to sister so-and-so. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Don't compare yourself to nobody. The Father gives us the example, amen, of how to be a good mother. But there were times even after doing all that, that I would feel inadequate and I would feel like, am I really a good mother? But nine times out of ten, that would be when the, the Lord would have one of those babies. I'll never forget it. It was the oldest one. And he couldn't have been more than, I don't know, six or something like that. It was one of them. And you know the kids go in and out. In and out. It, that door, we had screen doors then. Slamming, opening, slamming, opening. I was like, in or out, in or out. Just come on, say in or say out. And so, you know, if you're at the sink. I remember I was washing dishes or something like that. Mom, mom. And I said, just stay in, go outside and play. That's when they could go outside and play. Go outside and play or stay in and read or whatever, but you got to go in or out. Mom, mom, I heard this little voice behind me. Mom, mom. And so in my exasperation, doing the dishes, this commotion, all the other ones, wherever they're at, and this little voice saying, Mom, 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 I turned around quickly, and I didn't yell at them, but you know how you're a little short? What? And saints of God, if I didn't spin around and look at that little body with that little voice, and there was that little man looking up at me like this, because that's how little he is, with a handful of dandelions. Yeah. Mom, I just wanted to give you these. Of course, I felt like this big, but then this wonderful all at the same time. Because it was like the Lord was answering my question like, you're doing okay, mama. You're doing okay, mama. So the Lord is telling you mamas today, young or old, young or old, I don't care how, how young you are, how old you may be, you're doing okay. You're doing okay. T.D. Jake said it like this for the brothers. And I'll say it like this for the sisters, but I'll tell you what he said first. He said that as women, we need to be giving our, these brothers a standing ovation. We need to be saying, right on. We need to say, you go, man. You go, baby. You do this, you do that, because they're there. They're in the house. They're present. Are you going to always get along? Nope. Is there going to be some friction back and forth in every marriage? There is, but they're there. Yeah. They didn't pack it up and say, I'm out. They're there. Yeah. So the same thing with you mamas. You're there. Yeah. Whether you feel like you're doing it right or not, God will show you. Ask some older women. The Bible says, let the older women teach the younger women because we're going to live some life. Amen? And we didn't do it right all the time, but do you know what life's lessons will teach us? So ask some older women in your life. If you don't have any older women in your life, 
All the older women in this church, raise your hand. Old women, you can come, the members of this church, be happy to sit and talk with you after any Sunday service if you got a question. Because the Bible says that it's first natural, then spiritual. So there's things that you got to do to live and learn in this life that we're living. Amen? It's Mother's Day. It's not the only day that mothers should be recognized, but I am all for it. Let those babies recognize you, whether they're young or old. Put their little drawings up on the refrigerator. Make the biggest deal out of that bouquet of dandelions that you ever could put them in a vase your most prettiest vase of water and just keep on tending to them because you know pretty soon they're going to be like that but just tell those babies how much you love them and you appreciate them so that they will be encouraged that they're doing good stuff and when I'm doing this good stuff that's teaching them how to be a good man you're raising men and women not babies you're raising men and women you're showing them by precept and example our final scripture let's go to first John one nine. Brothers, I hope you're getting something out of this because it applies to you too. God loves you the same exact way. And he'll teach you and he'll show you and he'll correct you and he'll speak to you. And he'll use those babies, those children, young and old. All mine are out of the house, own their own homes, uh, grown as, and I got grandchildren now. But they'll still come every now and again and ask for a bit of advice. Or just run it by me to see what I might say. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. What is the first word in that scripture? Yes. Say it loud. What is the first word? Yes. If, if we confess our sins. Now, the Bible says that he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins. Amen? So maybe you got some sins you need to repent of and church is five days away. Or maybe you live by yourself. You and your babies are just you by yourself. And you got some sins that you need to repent of. He said, if you confess it, meaning all you got to do is say it. All you got to do is say, God, you already see this. What I have done, what I have said, what my continuous choice, uh, choices have been. And so you have already said, so now I'm confessing it to you. And you have promised me that you will forgive all of my sins. And you will purify me from all unrighteousness. So picture this. When you have some sin in your life that's hindering you from being a good person, first of all, from being a good parent, second of all, from being a good child of God, or maybe you're not even a child of God yet. If you have some sins, just picture it like this. He don't say, okay, now all y'all that got something you got to repent of. Let's see, you go home, you take a bath, take a shower, whatever your preference is. Lay out those nice, clean, pressed church clothes. Do your hair, get your hair did, get all that stuff that and come back next Sunday, and we're going to confess those sins. No. He said, come on. Come now. You know why? Next Sunday is not promised. As much as we want to go out and enjoy this afternoon and celebrate Mother's Day, this evening is not promised. This afternoon is not promised. There's so much stuff going on, let alone Jesus coming back. But for us, tomorrow's not promised to any of us. But we have to live our lives to where we're ready at a moment's notice. So if you need to repent of some sins, all you got to do is open up your mouth or say it in your mind, but believe it in your heart and ask God to forgive you, and he will do exactly that. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want you to be encouraged, mothers. I want you to look at yourself in that mirror when you're fixing your hair. I want you to be encouraged when maybe it's getting a little tight you got to stretch that food. You're not alone. I want you to be encouraged that when you, if you need some help with some bills or something like that, get, ask the Lord to give you wisdom. Ask the Lord to where you can go to get some help and just to tide you over. We shouldn't be in a perpetual state of that because we have a Father who supplies all of our needs. But all of us, all of us, all of us, if we're honest, will say, oh, yeah, I remember when. Yeah, yeah. I remember when. Mm -hmm. I used to live in a single-family home, public housing. Mm -hmm. You've heard me say this before. And I asked the Lord, I said, Father, I need to own my own home. I wasn't one of these that took my kids from here to there and yonder. I wanted them to have stability, but it was public housing. And I even asked them, will you sell this house to me? They said, nope. So every day when I would come home from work or we come home from church or whatever, I kid you not, before God, I'm in his house. I put that key in that lock and I say, Father, I thank you for my new home. Yeah. My home. Yeah. Father, I thank you for my new home. And I've been in my home for years now. 
because it's my home that he gave me. Now you know what I'm saying? Every time, everybody knows Pearl. Pearl's out in the parking lot. When I get into Pearl, she had some issues this weekend. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get here, Pastor. But every time I get into Pearl, I say, Lord, I thank you for the big sister of Pearl. Lord, I thank you for that new car. I thank you for that. But I am going to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. And I'm not about to go out there and make bills that are unnecessary for me to make right now. Amen? Amen. Have a good report within the house of God and without the house of God. Mothers, you're doing an excellent job. You're here in God's house today. Give yourselves a hand. Amen? You're doing a great job, mothers. And I salute you. I salute you. I hope that you got something out of this word on this afternoon. Amen? Let's say amen to the Lord for his word. Amen. Praise God. But I want to let you know, even as we talked about it, that the way to have this balance in our lives and to have this conversation with God is simply by asking him to forgive us of our sins. And guess what? You might have to ask him on a daily basis. But I'd rather ask him on a daily basis than miss out with God. I'd rather ask him in the morning, Lord, help me today to bring glory to your name. Ask him at night, forgive me if I said, thought, or did anything that brought shame to your name. Ask him. And he says he is faithful and just, and he will forgive you of all of your sins. So if there's anybody in God's house, or maybe you're listening on the web, and you want prayer, you want to ask God to forgive you, we can't lay hands on nobody, we can't have you come forward, but will you just stand up right where you are? If you need to ask God to forgive you of your sins, anything, I ain't going to ask you what it is. I'm not going to ask you what it is at all. Anybody at all? You might be a little sheepish. Maybe you want to just raise your hand. Praise God. And if you're listening on the web, if you need to ask God to forgive you of your sins, and you need to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior so you can embark on this wonderful, wonderful journey. We want to pray with you at this time as well. So I'm going to ask everybody in the congregation if you would just bow your heads. And if you'll pray, let's pray together for anybody who stands in need, especially those who are listening on the web. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for you are the one who teaches us. You teach us all things, Lord God. You love us. You forgave us. You sent your only son to die for us. And so, Lord God, we pray for anyone, Lord God, that doesn't know you. Lord, that even as they would pray right now, and they would say, God, forgive me of all my sin. Cleanse me and make me new again by the shed blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, that you will hear that prayer, that you will save them, that you will give them to know that they're saved. They will find themselves in your house someplace where they're teaching your word, Lord God. And they'll begin to talk to you on a daily basis, read and study your word on a daily basis, and we know that you will direct their paths. So I pray for each and every one that you would ask the Father God to forgive you of your sins in the mighty name of Jesus and he will do it. Amen and amen. God bless you, friends. Until next time, amen. God bless your afternoon.